Hi bot builders, this is Andrea Galately from Team Witch Doctor on the TV show BattleBots. And this is episode 4 of Witch Doctor Jr. Made possible by Sen Cut Sen. Today, we're going to continue building your very first small scale BattleBot. In episode 3, we learned about electricity and circuits, and we connected your robot's electronics. It's super important to understand how these electronics work in order to be able to troubleshoot and repair your robot between battles once you start competing. If you missed the last episode, you should go back to make sure you have all the information you need to assemble your robot today. It's finally time to start assembling the components into the frame. We're going to start by mounting the motors. Remember that we wired your motors for the left and right side, so we have to make sure that we install them correctly here. If you do end up installing these backwards, it's easy to switch the wires on the motor terminals. But let's try to get it right so your robot works correctly as soon as you turn it on. If you take a look at the face of the gearbox, you'll see that there are two small threaded holes. These are the holes that we're going to use to screw the motor onto the frame. We're going to install these screws using the smallest hex key that came with the kit. If you haven't used hex keys before, it's simply a different type of screwdriver. They're called hex keys because it looks like a hexagon if you look at the tip. It's easier to see the six sides on a bigger hex key. While a regular Phillips head screwdriver drives the screw with four contact points, a hex key drives the screw with six contact points. This means that hex keys are better at driving screws at higher torques, with less risk of damaging the screws. Let's start with the left motor. If you forgot which motor is which, just flip back through the instructions to remember which way it's wired. The left motor has a blue wire connected to the terminal by the red dot. We're going to mount this motor on the left side of the frame. That's the left side for your robot, not your left. If you take a look at the face of the gearbox, you'll see that there are two small threaded holes. These are the holes that we're going to use to screw the motor onto the frame. You're going to slide the motor shaft into the bigger center hole on the side of the frame until the face of the gearbox is flush against the frame. You'll see that there are two small holes in the frame here too. These holes should align with the two threaded holes that we saw in your gearbox, so just rotate the motor in your hand until you see these holes line up. Then, we're going to thread in the first screw using the hex key. Since the screws are so small, it's actually easier to put the screw on the hex key first and use that to align the screw into the hole. This part is definitely a little bit easier if you have somebody helping you. Don't worry if this part feels a little trickier than it looks. These are really small parts and it can definitely take some getting used to. You'll get more comfortable as you get more practice building and repairing your robot. When you build things with your hands, you're actually developing more dexterity. It's just like anything else, practice and experience will definitely make this easier. After you get your first screw in, the second screw will be much easier. Don't tighten that first screw all the way so that you can still rotate the motor enough to align the second hole. Once the second screw is in, you can go ahead and tighten both screws. Don't go crazy tightening these screws, just tighten them until it feels snug. During a battle, your robot goes through a whole lot of abuse. That can cause a lot of vibration, that can loosen your screws no matter how tight they started. Even just the motor going forward and then in reverse can cause the screws to start loosening. If they loosen all the way, your motor is no longer held in place to the frame, so when you try to spin your wheel, the motor actually spins inside your robot instead, and all the wires get tangled up. An easy solution to avoid this issue is to keep the head of the screws from being able to turn by applying a piece of tape over the screw head. Duct tape works great for this. If you do want to get a little fancier, you can buy some thread locker, like Loctite, and use that instead. Make sure to buy the right thread locker for the screw size you're using, and follow the directions that come with it, or else it will be really, really hard to take those screws out again. Also, don't let any thread locker touch the clear armor on your robot, since it could cause some cracks. Once you have the first motor installed, go ahead and do the same thing for the right motor. Make sure that the wires angle towards the front of the robot since that's where the electronics are going to go. Next, let's work on mounting the switch. We're going to use a mounting hole that's on the base plate right behind the motors, in the center. Use your fingers to unthread the knot on the switch that looks like a little ring. Then slide the switch through that mounting hole on the frame and thread the nut back on. Use pliers to make sure it's tight. Now we're going to install the wheel hubs. 
Your hubs may look different than mine, since Fingertech recently upgraded to blue twist hubs instead of these red snap hubs. They're very similar, so we'll install them in the same way. You'll see on the side of each hub that there's a threaded hole for a set screw to keep your hubs in place. A set screw is threaded like a normal screw, except it doesn't have a screw head on it. This lets it sit flush in the part. Go ahead and use the bigger hex key to thread a set screw into each hub. Just install it with a couple of turns. We want it to be loose so that we can slide the hub onto your motor shaft. When you slide the hub over the shaft, make sure that the flange is toward your robot. You want to make sure that your hub isn't so close to your robot that it might rub on the frame when your wheels spin, so make sure to leave a little room here. If you take a close look at your motor shaft, you'll notice that it has a flat on one side. This is called the D shaft, since the profile looks like the letter D. We want to tighten the set screw onto that flat surface to make sure that it doesn't slip, so rotate the hub until the set screw lines up with the middle of the flat surface, and then tighten the set screw. The hub should now feel secure on the motor shaft. Go ahead and do the same thing on the other side of your robot. Now it's time to add the tires. You're going to slide the center of the tire over the wheel hub. It's a pretty tight fit so that the tires don't slip while you're driving, so it's normal to have to use some force to push it on. These foam tires have a good grip and they can take a ton of abuse. I have the red snap hubs, which use a ring clip to keep the tire in place. Place the washer on the tire with the pocketed side facing out. You're going to press down on that washer to compress the foam tire. You want to make sure that you're not pressing on the motor shaft that sticks out the other side when you do this, so it helps to use the edge of a table. Use the ring clip pliers to install the ring onto the hub. This process is easier with some help from a second person. Now the tire is secure. Do the same thing on the other side, and now you have a rolling frame. If you have the blue twist hubs, the installation is a little different, but the end result is the same. Both of these hubs will hold your tire securely. The blue twist hubs can be a little bit easier to install. Now let's mount the electronics so they stay in place during battle. We're going to do this using some double face tape. Cut a strip and stick it to the bottom of the receiver. You can mount it anywhere you'd like. I'm going to put mine right here. I'll do the same with the battery. Now we have to organize this bundle of wires here. We don't want any of the wires to get pulled into the path of the spinning tires. I use a zip tie to hold them in place. You can cut off the excess of the zip tie when you're done. Zip ties are super handy to have in your toolbox and we use a ton of zip ties even in our bigger robots. Now your robot is ready for some armor. Let's start with the front armor. The holes on this piece will mount towards the top of your robot, so make sure it's oriented correctly. It has a protective film on both sides to prevent scratching, and we can peel that off now. This armor is clear polycarbonate, which is the same material used to make hurricane shutters and even bulletproof glass, so it's really tough material. We're going to install it using the longest screws in your kit, since this armor is actually thicker than the top armor. Those screws are 632 button cap screws. We'll use the hex key to install them, just like we did with the smaller screws to mount your motor. Don't tighten these screws all the way down right away. We'll do that after we have all the screws in. Whenever you're installing screws, remember the saying righty tidy, lefty loosey. I know it sounds really silly, but it's super helpful to remember which way to turn the screw. Even the most advanced builders refer back to this saying when installing screws. Since we haven't tightened these screws all the way down yet, we have a little bit of play here. We'll use that to make sure that the armor is flush with the ground, so that you can get under your opponent. Once you're happy with it, go ahead and tighten those screws. The next step to get your robot running is to charge the battery. I know you can't wait to turn your robot on for the first time, but please watch the next episode to make sure that you can charge your battery safely. I would like to thank Said Cut Send for making this video possible. I know you can't wait to start making your own robot parts, so let's take a look at that process. In the last episode, we walked through uploading your file for the front armor to Send Cut Send's website. Once your file is uploaded, the next step is to choose a material. You can see the options by scrolling down here. 
Aluminum is a good choice for durability, weight, and price. We'll go more in depth on more material choices, like steel and titanium, in a future episode. I'll choose 6061 aluminum. 5052 aluminum is better for parts that need to be bent. Here you can see all the thicknesses they offer. The front armor that came with your kit is 3 millimeters thick. Aluminum is a little bit heavier than polycarbonate, but since I'm not adding a weapon to this robot, I'm not that worried about weight. So I'm going to choose the 8th inch thickness, which is about 3.2 millimeters. Once you choose that, you can see the pricing here on the right. We'll talk more about pricing and quantities in the next episode. Thank you for supporting this video, Send Cut Send. If you have questions on any of the builds so far, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I'll see you at episode 5, where we'll talk about batteries and chargers. Until then, happy building!